I, Bakananza Hilda Walaga, swear in the name of the Almighty God that I will and truly exercise the judicial functions entrusted to me to the Republic of Uganda and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Sorry, of the court. Abala mzuba tanu mebala ya zidu wa kwega tako sigeda mzimu kwanga. Kumukolo ya gubade kuchitewe cha sigeda mzimu kampala. Omukolo ya gukula izabano. Kukule mbedu wa msabala mzue kwanga. Alifonso au unyi dolo. Kumukolo ya gunosabala mzue dolo. Asayeba naso kwega tako sigeda mzue. Okulaba ngabalu wa nyisengu zimu chitongo lechino. We have always had this corruption in the judiciary. And I've always said yes and no. Me, I'm not given to pretense. I said, yes, there's corruption in the judiciary, but also there's no corruption. I think what, what they call corruption may not be the corruption, I, I think, there is in the judiciary. But the beginning is, where have we got the five of you? We have not recruited you from the judiciary. We have recruited you from outside the judiciary. So if you come, and exhibit corrupt mentality, then the public out there is the one responsible, the one who should be blamed. Why, why didn't you ensure that these five people, why didn't you ensure that the Chief Justice, when he was growing up, was well brought up to fear, to touch money or property which he has not sweated for? So while I will concede, I will say, Whatever corruption we find in the judiciary, we are given by the people. If the people of Uganda shun corruption, if the people of Uganda do not honor corrupt people, you see in elections, votes are bought. What is that? You know, you, you find the person who is most glorified in the village, in the parish, in the sub-county, in the county, in the district, in the region is known to be corrupt. Now, while I will take responsibility for my judicial officer who does that, I want all Ugandans to take responsibility so that we fight the cancer of corruption in this country together. But while you are here in the judicial, which I hate with my colleagues here, please, the moment the thought to be corrupt crosses your mind, just leave. If we cross it, just even to contemplate how can I be corrupt, please leave. Because it will be bad for you. It will be bad for your name. So for us, zero tolerance. Many times, many times we hear allegations. We receive allegations against this or that judicial officer. Then we say, please, give me something concrete. Ah, they will know I'm the one who have given you. How do I act on such material? So I'm speaking out to the people of Uganda. We can only fight corruption if you know the Chief Justice is corrupt. Please come and say, Mr. Chief Justice, here is the evidence. Have the courage to step down so that you are not embarrassed. Your Majesty Grade 1 in this court is terrible. For us, we call him Mr. Corruption. We don't call him James. For us, we call him Mr. Corruption. I said, please, give me something tangible, something concrete. And you see, we'll be swift to deal with corruption. The other ones, we will train you, the ones my Lord talked about at length. And I thank you, my Lord, this is How important you are, you are the court because you are the one who renders justice. Imagine all that power and everybody comes and bows before you as if you are a demigod. And you abuse that honor by doing things which only a mad person should do. We exit you. The door is so wide for exiting. So my appeal to you, my plea to you, please, do not do anything that would make people say, you are corrupt, the judiciary is corrupt. Remain a prisoner of your conscience. If your conscience had fled, look for it and bring it back. Say, now I'm in the judiciary, 
I have now submitted myself to you as my Lord. I'm now your prisoner. Bring your conscience back. Hard work. When you work hard, it will always be noticed. You may be posted to Kabong. I know many of you don't even know where Kabong is. You may be posted to Bundibuja, um, uh, Kisoro, which until they made the Tamak Road was unreachable. And then your colleague will be posted to Kampala here. Let me tell you the trick. You will be more easily noticeable than the fellow who is in Kampala. Because there you stand out here, the fellow is enjoying city life, but he's swallowed up in in the multitude of judicial work around here. So wherever they post you, go and perform. Wherever you go tomorrow, when they assign you, go and perform, we will notice. How will we notice? We even now are going to notice more easily. Because the court inspectorate in the judiciary is now being made into a robust institution. You'll have inspectors everywhere. Bwadu na kubiliza bala muzabala hizi dua, okukumu obwerufu mungkola yemili mujiawe, ateno okunyueze ebila hile vya wakubye. Even if the president comes to your court, the president of the country, the chief justice, the deputy chief justice, the principal judge who is the director, the administrator of your court, nobody has the right to disrupt your court function. As a matter of fact, if I find you you're conducting proceedings, I will keep to my shoe normally makes knocks, but I will keep to and bow down like this and get a seat until you finish. Do you understand this? Yeah. Because whatever my visit is does not override your function as a judicial officer. So that one, whoever you finish what is before you, then you go. Somebody will take care of the Chief Justice. And if the Chief Justice uh, finds you in court, might inform the clerks that, okay, uh, our ship is in court, I'm going to town uh, uh, to clean my face, then I'll come back. You finish whatever you're doing. Those are the powers you have, and that's the purpose of judicial work. But then, I have also seen <laughs> some writings where people say the principal judge or the chief justice or the chief registrar has no powers to call a file which is before you. Better understand what your judicial powers are. The principal judge will never tell you it would be an abomination if you or she, he or she does that. That please pass judgment in this way. You never, I mean, that one is a very serious offense. But we always receive all sorts of complaints. Many of them which we receive, you never, you never come to know. Because we look at them and we say, this has got no material. So the principal judge will tomorrow call a file which is before you, investigate, and find out if either you are abusing the due process or something is wrong, we'll call you. If he thinks talking to you can make you change, can do the right thing, he will do so. But he has the power to remove a file and allocate it to somebody else. Justice must not be delayed. Render your decision expeditiously. The people come to you. We've had to pursue this transformation agenda of ours uh, uh, with, 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 with my colleagues in the top administration. We came up quite clearly that we must litter, literally litter the countryside with courthouses so that courthouses are the lowest judicial ranking which many of you are going to, is within reach of the poor person. The rich person can go 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 
100 kilometers. But the poor person, my, 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 my mother, my auntie, my uncles, they cannot. So we, we, we made a conscious decision to take justice to them. And that's why we celebrate your appointment. Mumyuka wa saba na mzi Richardi Butera. Awada bala hizi duwa magezo kukumi na wagulu wa muti ndogo buwele zaabu wabwe. Ateno kukumi nkola gana yawe wakati wabwe nebi tongole biya government ye bidala. I wish to welcome you again, the Chief Magistrate and the Magistrate's Grade 1. It is always a pleasure for us that we witness the expansion of the judicial officers that we are getting more and more magistrates, grade one and chief magistrates, is a sign that the judiciary is getting closer to the people that it serves. You will be posted to stations in Uganda. Now, at your category of magistrates, grade one and chief magistrates, you are the people closest to the population that we serve. You are more in numbers. The judiciary is looking at getting to a grade one at every constituency, chief magistrate at every district. When that is achieved, people will come to your courts easily. That is therefore really the show window for the judiciary. That's where people know the judiciary. What you do therefore affects more people than what is done at the High Court, at the Court of Appeal, at the Supreme Court. The image you carry is the image of the judiciary. If you work, then the performance of the judiciary gets close to people. If you don't work, that's the image you give us. We look therefore to you for effective performance. Keep aware that every morning you wake up, you go to court, the public is looking at you as a representative of the whole judiciary. When you come late, you are being assessed. When you are in court, you are hearing the cases. But the people are looking at who is their judicial officer. It will matter a lot how you dress, how you handle the people before you. Avoid being rude in your court. It, people should come to court and they don't feel they are being terrorized. Just beginning from that, are they comfortable where they are? Butele daba wadda magezi buli musango kugutu walanga mkulu. Inti kumanga wewe nkanyeri wa nansi. Your relationship with the people you work with at your own court matters. The people you supervise should be treated well. It is only when you treated, treat them well that they will be free to interact with the public, to guide you even where you go wrong since you are right. I mean, you are new. We have all been at the level where you were. I think when I was a magistrate, grade one, I was guided by a magistrate grade two, junior to me, but had been a performer and had been a judicial officer for a long time. Because I was humble to him, he found it easy to guide me on what, how to act. Even enter court, you may have been a senior lawyer in private practice, but you have not had the experience of entering court of recording a plea. How do you record it? But you are magistrate at the station who may be junior to you but has been working 
can guide you. A clerical officer who has been working at court for a number of years can guide you. But you won't do that if you are rude to him. If he thinks you are too senior for him to approach and talk to. Your relationships with your supervisors also matters. They will call for your file. As a judicial officer, keep aware that there may be complaints in respect of what you do. It is important that your supervisors, who have a duty to attend to those complaints, get your file when they call for it to assess whether you are right or wrong. If you are right, they return it to you and say continue. If you are wrong, they will guide you. Don't say, why, why are you calling for my fire? I'm also a lawyer, I know what I'm doing. We have those attitudes, but they don't help you grow. Your relationships with other government agencies also matter. The judiciary has the duty to deliver justice to the population, but you will never do it alone. For a criminal case, it will arise in a village, and probably the person who arrests the offender is an LOC chairman. Then it comes to police. Then the file comes to the DPP's office and the state attorney, eventually to you. Witnesses won't come to your court unless the LOCs and the local government leaders help you to get the witnesses to come to court. You will not hear a case and complete it unless witnesses come to you. So coordinate with the ODPP's office, with police, prisons, and other institutions, and then our, our performance will be fine. If you don't, you won't achieve much. Akuira bala mzibe koti nkulu Dr. Flavian Zaija, akubidi zabala mzabala izi dua, okulaba angaba wele zaba antubuli omu mochiti iche, wamuno kufayi okulaba angaba we insala mbude. They expect integrity and zero tolerance to corruption. And you know when you engage in that, your days in judicial are numbered. Uh, two, shunning absenteeism. You can imagine uh, people coming to court and you are not there. They have spent the money which they don't have, had earned money. So do not absent yourselves. Laziness, not, not doing the work as expected. And then poor timekeeping. People come and wait for you at court. You are supposed to be there at 8. For you, you come at 11 and you start court at the midday. So please ensure that it doesn't happen. Uh, three, ensure, ensuring certain of hearing dates for court users. People should know when they are coming to court and when they are returning to court. So don't keep them in suspense. Then uh, four, timely completion of hearing of cases. We ex people come to court to get the decisions. They don't come to court to be heard only. So you must, you must uh, complete cases in time and also deliver the decision. And the Judicial Code of Conduct expects that you do this in 60 days upon completion of the matter. Uh, next, time we are availing of certified copies of record of proceedings and judgments and rulings if the people want to appeal against your decision. Some of you fear being appealed against, but that is a process that was put in place. You should, you should facilitate that process. People may need to test your decision at a higher level. Uh, Next, observance of good customer care practices in all aspects of service delivery in our courts. You need to know, I'm sure even some of you may have been even fearing to come to court. Now you are there. So now you, you imagine a villager who has never come to court who thinks that he's going to be arrested. You must have a system of customer care at your courts to ensure that whoever comes to court is assisted. Three, ensure, ensuring certain of hearing dates for court users. People should know when they are coming to court and when they are returning to court. So don't keep them in suspense. Then uh, four, timely completion of hearing of cases. We ex people come to court to get the decisions. They don't come to court to be heard only. So you must, you must uh, complete cases in time and also deliver the decision.